Okay, Neil. All right. And just confirming someone else out there can see Neil's screen now? Yes. Time at the top. Okay. Uh, Great. Thank you. All right, our next presenter is Neil Dixon from the National Weather Service office in Greenville, Spartansburg. And uh, he's going to pre be presenting on uh, social media dashboard, a locally developed application. Turn it over to Neil. Okay, thank you very much. Um, can you? I'm working on a, a, a two-screen um, computer station. Do you see the, uh, the regular presentation slide? Yes, the title. So your title slide is up. Okay, very good. Okay, well, um, I'm going to be talking about the uh, a tool called a social media dashboard, which is a locally developed application. And advance the slide here. So what is the social media dashboard? Uh, the first purpose of the dashboard is it's a tool that allows an unlimited number of users to manage uh, both the Twitter and Facebook social media accounts. It does have a second purpose in that it can serve as a situational awareness display and a warning verification resource. And just a, a few or a couple quick notes about the dashboard. Um, each social media dashboard can be customized uh, for each weather service office to, uh, to better suit their forecast area. And uh, as of today, the tool has been utilized by 61 weather service offices across five weather service regions. Just a few uh, terms that I'll be using. Uh, the first one is Hootsuite, and it's a, a popular third-party application that uh, as far as I'm aware, is being used at, at each and every uh, weather service office to manage both their Twitter and Facebook accounts. So it's pretty widespread. There's uh, several different versions of Hootsuite, but uh, I believe every office is using the free version. The uh, second tool is TweetDeck, which is another application that's being used by weather service offices. It's less widespread than Hootsuite, uh, probably because it only uh, manages the, the Twitter social media account. So for uh, the Twitter, this is a screen capture of, uh, of the social media dashboard. And you can see it can emulate a lot of the same features that you find in Hootsuite. Um, for, for our dashboard and our Hootsuite account, we have uh, basically four Twitter tabs. Uh, one's kind of a general purpose uh, Twitter tab, but we also have it uh, narrowed down to winter weather thunder, and flooding. So what these tabs will do is that they'll search for um, certain keywords and hashtags that apply to each one of these topics. And then it will filter them out to, uh, to tweets that originate from within our forecast area. So uh, they'll, uh, either the tweets will be delivered in these Twitter streams. And then uh, as an operator, you can click on the tweets and you can either reply to this, this person's message or retweet it or send it as a favorite just by clicking on the dashboard. And then if you want to compose and send a message, you just go down to the uh, bottom of the Twitter streams, just about each one. Uh, click on it. This uh, Twitter dialog box will appear. You can type in your message, hit the tweet button, and it will send your tweet. For Facebook, it's a, a, a little bit different approach. And um, you know, I broke down our media market into three markets, and, and just about any weather service office can do this. But we have the Charlotte market, uh, the Greenville, Spartanburg, and Asheville market, and the Triad market. And just by totaling up the um, the media Facebook pages likes, you can see that the numbers get pretty large pretty quick. And then uh, you throw in a couple of these weather interest groups. Uh, two of ours is Ray's Weather. Another one is Burke Weather. And uh, just from these dozen or so Facebook pages, uh, you can see uh, a total like of 1.8 million people. And uh, that's in a CWA of about 4.9 million people. So you can roughly see comments, pictures, uh, even videos from potentially 40% you know, of, uh, of at least our forecast area just from these dozen Facebook pages. And as a contrast, you know, we spend a lot of time training um, 
Skyworn spotters, and we have these other contacts, and that totals to about uh, 6,700 contacts. And you know, these are great, uh, great people. They're very dedicated into um, submitting their train observations to us. But at the same time, with Facebook, you can see those pictures. Uh, you can ask questions back and forth. And you can do it uh, just as good during the day as you can at night when uh, typically we leave our, our spotters alone after supper time. So for Facebook, under the, uh, the Facebook selection of the dashboard, what I did is I uh, created these Facebook um, streams for each uh, news station. So you can quickly uh, survey, see, what, uh, see what's making news, and then a lot of our media um, uh, partners are, are really good at bot, uh, bot posting our warnings. So you can see down here they're mentioning one of our warnings. And if we want to see if anybody's having uh, any flooding reports or asking any questions or we have questions, all you have to do is click on the tab uh, for this particular Facebook page and it will launch the page in this full domain. And then using your Facebook account you can interact with this, with this media page. So it's a real fast way to, um, to monitor multiple Facebook pages without having to rely on the news feed. And um, it's also a great kind of outreach, just about uh, you know, one out of two people that you contact and that you're interacting with on one of these media Facebook pages, they end up liking your page, so uh, the office Facebook page. So it's, it's a good way to kind of get out and do some outreach on social media. Um, Another uh, feature that I've learned, you know, just sharing the dashboard with other offices, is that uh, other offices have created basically a, a social media panel just to monitor their uh, their neighboring weather service offices. So in our case, you can see uh, there's Peachtree, Morristown, Blacksburg, Raleigh, and Columbia. So you can view both their Twitter account and their Facebook account from this one display, which is good just to uh, optimize situational awareness. But also being a good neighbor, you can share and retweet some of their social media posts. So there's uh, six key advantages of using the social media dashboard, especially with Twitter, um, above using Hootsuite and uh, TweetDeck. And the first one is that with the social media dashboard, there's no advertising. So you won't see any of these uh, distracting um, uh, commercial tweets, you know, saying that someone in Seattle is looking for you, or advertising uh, Hootsuite, you know, lecture series uh, anytime you issue a graphic. So, uh, you know, Twitter is noisy enough not to uh, have to sift through commercials. The uh, fifth advantage is that you get better retweets using the dashboard because it's basically using uh, the Twitter web page. So when you click retweet, the uh, tweet is ready to go. All you have to do is just you know, confirm retweeting by clicking the button, and it's gone. Hootsuite, with being a third-party application, um, needs to add this RT and the account name, and then it will, will show the tweet that you want to retweet. But by doing that, it adds extra characters. So in this case, there's 16 uh, characters that are beyond the 140 character limit on Twitter. So it, you know, requires some time to do some editing, and then you can send it. So um, the dashboard makes retweeting, a, you know, far much easier and faster. The uh, fourth advantage is that uh, you can set the filters so there's no profanity or other not safe for work content to display on the dashboard, which is um, which is a pretty good advantage because you can. Um, you know, we use the dashboard as on one of our situational awareness displays, so as when you have office tours coming through, you don't have to worry about them being exposed to profanity or other kind of indecent uh, images. And the way that works is that Twitter itself, uh, the users of Twitter, will kind of self-regulate what's out there. So if this picture of this kitten was offensive and somebody flagged this media, well, that flag would prevent it from showing up on the, on the social media dashboard. The uh, third advantage, and uh, this is a pretty big one and saves a lot of time, is that the social media dashboard will display uh, thumbnails of photos of, um, you can see in this case, Vine videos, uh, YouTube. They can all be displayed within the Twitter streams themselves. 
when on Hootsuite, all you're provided is a web link that requires you to click on it, you know, let it load, and then, uh, you know, you know, chances are by the time you go through that, it wasn't worth looking at in the first place. So the dashboard does provide you a preview. If you want to see a bigger version of it, you can just click on the picture, and it will display in its full domain or go to the YouTube page. The uh, second advantage is that the, the delivery of the tweets is, is much faster in the dashboard um, than you would find in Hootsuite. And um, you know, depending on your settings on Hootsuite, the uh, dashboard can deliver uh, tweets onto the display as, as quick as eight and a half minutes before Hootsuite will. If you crank uh, Hootsuite to the lowest uh, refresh rate, which I believe is two minutes, then, um, then you're still going to see the uh, tweet being delivered in the dashboard about a half a minute uh, quicker than you will in Hootsuite. So during uh, last winter, I was watching one of our uh, snow uh, streams that was just searching out the word snow, and I basically saw about 60 tweets arriving in that Twitter stream before the first one displayed in the Hootsuite uh, uh, stream. So it's, uh, it makes monitoring uh, Twitter a lot easier because they're coming in live, they're being delivered one at a time. When on Hootsuite, it just refreshes every two minutes and then you get like a 60-tweet a uh, Twitter delivery. But the uh, number one advantage is that the, uh, the dashboard will allow an unlimited number of users. Everybody in the office can be on the dashboard. There's no login or password. All you do is click on the link and it, it launches it. And um, so there's no limitations at all, but with Hootsuite using the free version, you're limited to just two users. If a third user uh, goes to log into the free account, then it will bump off the first person. And uh, we looked, and, and this was really the whole uh, genesis behind the idea of creating the dashboards, because we looked into buying more licenses to add a third user, but that was going to be $250 a year, and then, you know, the amount you know, really gets quite high when you want everybody in the office on it. If you want to get up to 11 users, then that's going to be $18,000 a year. So uh, that's just a lot of money to, to give to, uh, to an application that monitors Twitter. So no tool is perfect, and the dashboard does have its limitations. And the uh, first one is um, the dashboard cannot post to both Facebook and Twitter at the same time which is not a great, uh, a great challenge to overcome because you can just simply cut and paste and chances are your message for Facebook is going to be uh, constructed different than, than uh, constructing a tweet within a 140 character limit of Twitter. But if you have a short post, you cannot send it both at the same time. You have to, have to cut and paste. Um, the tool does take about one to three hours to set up for any uh, weather service office. I provide uh, code and uh, documentation. Also been you know, fielding a lot of questions, so I'll, I'll help you out as much as possible, but there is a, a time investment of sending up the tool. And for uh, posting graphics to Twitter, uh, there is an extra step included. Uh, this is the dialog box that appears when you click on the, uh, on the dashboard, but if you want to attach an image, uh, you just click on the uh, Twitter icon. It will take you to the Twitter page. Then you can just click on the, uh, the quill icon, and then you can type in your post and attach your pictures. The, uh, the second purpose of the dashboard is that it can serve as you know, kind of a situational awareness display and also as a, a warning verification resource. And what I did is that took all these online resources. Um, the main ones are Coco Raws, um, police, fire, and county scanners. They're, they're fantastic sources for information. These are live uh, police scanners that are streaming online. So uh, counties that, uh, that have them provided, all you have to do is turn it on and just monitor. And you can hear the 911 operator or the dispatch uh, radioing out calls to uh, to the fire departments or to the police stations about you know, removing trees off of roads or blocking off flooded roads. And you can hear all that information coming in live and you don't have to uh, 
to bother the dispatcher. So these online police scanners are fantastic. Also, uh, I know the South Carolina Highway Patrol is really good at putting some of the same information online. Uh, I'll show you that in a little bit. But uh, the utility companies with their power outage maps have, uh, have really uh, made their maps more useful over the past couple of years. They've placed them on Google Maps or some other uh, zoomable map, and you can actually see an outline of where the power outage is taking place. And if you're doing uh, post-warning verification, then it will give you a, a really strong lead of where to start making calls because it will outline uh, very precisely uh, which roads are being affected. And also it provides a platform to, uh, to display uh, webcams. So let me show you, show you our dashboard. It's under this uh, section called Set Aware. And you know, here's our uh, forecast area. You can see all the webcams uh, listed as little uh, webcam icons, or if you have a live cam, you can distinguish that with a different icon. But each one of these squares is a list, uh, like we see here for Mecklenburg County, of potential online sources for uh, verification information that apply to just that one county. So we have uh, 46 counties, and our links are about uh, 500 links. And each one of these lists are applying to just the utility companies, just the Cocoa Ross pages, just the scanners that will that are serving Mecklenburg County. And of course, if you if you click on the webcam, it will display the uh, the latest image that's available. So uh, this is the way uh, the South Carolina Highway Patrol um, displays their reports. So you can see that. You know, they list the tree in the roadway, what time it occurred, which county that's in, and, and what's the location. So in this, on this particular day, you can see there's a lot of trees in the roadway, um, but it, it will list uh, power lines in the road, um, you know, flooded roads, any, any type of information. And what we did is that we wrote a script that only applies to South Carolina, and uh, I don't know if South Carolina is using a vendor that maybe another state is using. But uh, the script goes out, it collects these certain keywords, and it uh, makes a 60-day archive of this live data so we can go back after the fact and, and review this information. So just the way um, you know, things have really exploded, this information has, has really taken off over the past couple of years. Uh, back in 2010, we had a, a Christmas storm that produced a pretty significant snowfall. Uh, from one side of our forecast area to the other. And, you know, basically from public reports and Skyrun reports and uh, co-op reports, you know, the most we could generate back in 2010 was uh, 200 snowfall reports. But uh, back in uh, this year, uh, just before Valentine's Day, we had another uh, significant snow event. And through social media and going out to some of these media pages, uh, Facebook pages, uh, we were able to, to double the number of snowfall reports. So the, the information is getting more and more plentiful. I think the quality is just as good. Um, so the more reports, the, uh, the better everybody's being served. And for uh, convective situations, um, this was an event that I was, I was a radar operator. Uh, there was really just one storm in the area, but it was a stationary uh, uh, heavy rainfall producing thunderstorm near Clemson. And it occurred uh, pretty late in the evening. You see the times on these LSRs start about a quarter after 10, went all the way to about midnight. So already it's too late to be calling spotters. But by just monitoring um, the police and fire scanner for Oconee County, uh, monitoring one media Facebook page and looking at the South Carolina Highway Patrol uh, collective, we were able to get um, you know numerous uh, real-time reports without even needing to call anybody on the phone. We, we didn't need to bother the uh, emergency manager or the 911 dispatch where we're hearing all this information online. So again, I. Um, I estimate that it takes anywhere between one to three hours to set up the dashboard. Um, so if you're interested, you can, 
you can email me at my address here, and I can open up the Google Drive uh, to your email account where you can find all the codes and instructions to, uh, to set up the dashboard. So just as a summary, um, there's also another section of the dashboard that integrates some social media search engines. Uh, the top one is um, called uh, Topsy. It's a very handy tool. If you know there was some flooding in a certain area, you can just you know search out that town and the word flooding. And uh, been pretty successful with finding uh, tweets to verify warnings that way. But the uh, the dashboard is, you know, one of its prime uh, services is just organizing all these online resources into uh, individualized county lists. It also makes it a handy way to uh, display um, live webcam images. Um, the dashboard emulates a lot of the features of Hootsuite and uh, TweetDeck, but it does have the advantage over TweetDeck that it can be organized in tabs when uh, TweetDeck just has one long continuous string of uh, these Twitter streams. It also provides a unique and efficient way to monitor Facebook and basically the same display for monitoring your neighboring uh, weather service office both their Facebook and their Twitter display. So uh, this table is a you know kind of a quick comparison of the features of the social media dashboard compared to uh, TweetDeck and Hootsuite and you can see uh, you know basically every category uh, the dashboard provides either the same service or a superior service. So with that, I'll take any uh, comments or questions or recommendations. All right. Thanks, Neil. Any uh, any questions? Yeah, Neil. This is Peter Honored at Mid Atlantic RFC. Is there a potential instead of uh, having things organized by county, having the RFC organize uh, contacts by uh, river basin? Uh, yeah, I can't think of any reason why that couldn't be the case. Um, you know, you can have uh, someone that specializes in, in GIS to maybe have an outline of the basin and right. just, just place a uh, an indicator in there. You can you can list only the resources that apply to that basin. Okay, thank you. Sure. Neil, hi, it's uh, Brian Moretzky from Eastern Region. How are you? Doing good. A uh, question for you with the uh, business manager transition that we're uh, that's ongoing right now. Have uh, you experienced any problems with accessing Facebook or posting to Facebook? Have you tried posting to Facebook uh, with the office account? Uh, using the dashboard or just just in general? Using, using using your dashboard has the transition to business manager affected that in any way? Uh, you know, we've been able to log in to our Facebook page without the business manager, so I don't know if our if our account's still a gray account or it's been converted over yet or not. But okay, I'll I'll have to check with the. I, I don't remember if I if your office did or not yet. So uh, I don't think so, but I can't remember. Yeah, I'm, I made a post uh, about two thirty, and it was with the standard uh, gray account. Okay. All right. Well, we'll see what happens after that. So, thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, thank you very much, Neil. Uh, you know, very interesting application. Uh, I think it has a lot of potential uh, to streamline some operations. Thank so, you. Thanks everyone for uh, for participating. Jeff, is this recorded? Yes, it is, uh, and I'll uh, you know uh, send out the links once we've uh, posted it up on YouTube. Great, thanks. All right, thanks everyone.